everyone for today's lesson we are going to continue with our discussion on rigid motion and congruence before we get started with today's lesson please make sure that you have completed the discussion notes for unit two um or sorry, unit four day two rigid motion and what we learned about in this lesson is that in order for figures to be considered congruent the shape and size of those figures have to be the exact same. And more specifically, one figure's parts has to match or correspond to another figure's parts. And so in this lesson, we are going to be analyzing figures and showing that every angle and every side that match up with one another are indeed congruent to each other. When we did a quick explor uh, exploration and uh, analysis of these two triangles, we talked about the fact that a triangle or any figure is made up of parts, and those parts are sides and angles. And when it comes to matching or identifying congruent corresponding parts, it's all about looking at the picture or maybe even looking at the statement and making sure that those pieces match exactly. So if you see an A, a G matches in that spot. If you see the letter B, B and E would match up in the same spot. Same thing with C and O. It was very, very rigid and intentional with how we wrote all of our statements. A congruent statement is where you talk about that full figure using all of the letters that make up that figure and you match them up in a congruence statement. So let's go ahead and do a few examples. So in example number one, it says, we have a rotated quadrilaterals. So rotated quadrilaterals means that these two quadrilaterals are the same shape, it's just that one has a different orientation. And what we wanna do is we wanna analyze our picture and list all of the congruent corresponding parts. So this is where it's all about matching and you want to match up arc marks and then we'll be matching up later sides and tick marks. So let's go ahead and look at um, starting with letter Q. Letter Q has one arc mark. So I'm gonna write angle Q has to be congruent to angle X. So a lot of kids would say angle F because it looks like it's in the same spot, but it's all about the arc marks. So angle Q and angle X only have one arc mark. So we would say angle Q is congruent to angle X. Let's look at angle D. Angle D has two arc marks. And it would be congruent to angle E, which also has two arc marks. Angle A has three arc marks. And it would be congruent to angle L, which also has three arc marks. And finally, angle U would be congruent to angle F because both of these angles have four arc marks. So the angles are actually pretty easy. The sides, that's where it gets a little tricky. So it's all about matching. So what I see is Q to D. So I'm gonna write Q, D. Q and D has one arc mark and two arc marks. And it's going to be congruent to, remember that Q matches with X and D matches with E. So I'm going to write X, E. And if you look, we're going from 1 to 2, 1 to 2. Next, I'm going to look at um, going from 2 to 3. That is D to A. So segment D, A would be congruent to segment D matches with E. And A matches with L, so E, L. And I'm gonna mark it up with two arc, uh, tick marks to say that these two segments have to be congruent to each other. Now I'm gonna match three arc marks with four, three with four. So I'm gonna write segment A, U is congruent to segment, well, A matches with L and U matches with F. So AU matches with UF, sorry guys. I 
have to match it up with the same number of arc mark, uh, tick marks. Sorry. So this needs three and this one needs three. And finally, we have segment UQ. And that's going to be congruent to U matches with F and Q matches with X. So it's going to be Q, U is congruent to F, X. Now the question is, Miss Oliveira, do I have to go in this order like Q, D? Could I write D, Q? The answer is yes, of course. You just have to make sure that the other side has E, X. Could you say A, D instead of D, A? Of course. It just means that the other side has to have L, E instead of E, L. It's all about matching. So now what we're going to do is we're going to write two congruent statements for our quadrilaterals. Now remember that a congruent statement is where you talk, use all of the letters and then you say it's congruent to all of the letters. So I'm going to just come up with different letters. And when you do letters, it has to go around. You can't crisscross. So no crisscrossing. You have to go around the shape. So I'm going to go Q, D, A, U. Whenever you name quadrilaterals, you just list all of the letters. It's going to be congruent to Q matches with X, D matches with E, A matches with L, and U matches with F. There is one statement. Quadrilateral Q, D, A, U is congruent to quadrilateral X, E, L, F. Let's look at the next one. So you can start at any location that you want. Let's say you want to start at A and you want to say A, U, Q, D. That's going to be congruent to A matches with L, U matches with F, Q matches with X, and D matches with E. So there, you would say quadrilateral Q, U, I'm sorry, A, U, Q, D is congruent to quadrilateral L, F, X, E. And of course, these are, these are just two congruent statements. You could have many congruent statements. So now this next one says your turn. I would like you to please go ahead and identify all of the, um, these, we have reflected pentagons, so I want you to recognize the fact that they are reflected of a reflection of each other, and I want you to match and list the angles that are congruent, the sides that are congruent, and write two congruent statements. Please pause the video and see if you can do this on your own, and when you have an answer, please restart the video and we'll see how well you did. All right, let's go ahead and look at your answers. So looking at our angles, because these have been reflected, hopefully you have um, H would be would match with K. You might have had different tick marks and that's okay. So I'm gonna say angle H is congruent to angle K. Angle O is congruent to angle T. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I messed this one up already. Jeez Louise. Let's try this again. This is not, it's not translation. It's a reflection. Jeez Louise. H actually matches with R. Oops. Because it's a flip. So H matches with R. I misread my notes. Um, and we have O matches with T. And we have S actually matches with I because, I'm sorry, um, Jeez Louise, we have H-O-U-S-E. So S actually matches with C, U matches with K, and E matches with I. Jeez Louise, I'm going to mark this up before I screw this problem up any further. So I'm going to say H-O-U-S-E. So H-O-U matches with K. S matches with C. And E matches with I. So U matches with K. Angle S is congruent to angle C. 
and angle E is congruent to angle I. There we go. That makes more sense because it's a reflection. So it's like mapping or matching onto it. Let's look at the side links. Side links H, O would match with T, R, or more specifically, R, T. And we would say that O, U matches with K, um, T, K. We would say that U, S which match with KC. We would say that side length SE would match with side length CI. And finally, we would have HE would be congruent to RI. Hopefully you guys did pretty well on that problem. I know it's very tricky in terms of trying to match things up, especially when you don't have the arc marks already given to you, so that can be kind of challenging. But in terms of coming up with a congruent statement, we want to write down all of the letters. So hopefully you have like H-O-U-S-E would be congruent to R-T-K-C and I. Coming up with another congruent statement, you could have, make sure it's going all the way around. Maybe you have, you know, U S E. H O would be congruent to K C I R and T. That would be two congruent statements. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next page. For example number two, the question is, are the two shapes congruent? And if so, list all of their corresponding parts and write two congruency statements for the congruent figures. If they are not congruent, write not congruent. So you want to look at and analyze the pictures and see if these shapes are indeed congruent to each other. So looking at letter A, I can see that we have one, two, three, four arc marks and inside of one picture and one, two, three, four arc marks inside of another picture and I see one, two, three, four tick marks, one, two, three, four tick marks. So yes, I'm going to say that they are congruent to each other. They are congruent. So now I have to list all of their parts. So I'm going to start with the first arc mark. Angle C would be congruent to angle H because they both have one arc mark. Angle D would be congruent to angle I because they have one arc mark. Angle E would be congruent to angle J because they have three arc marks. And angle F would be congruent to angle K. In terms of side links, we're going to match up the tick marks. I have segment CD would be congruent to segment HI, matching up the arc marks. I have segment DE would be congruent to segment IJ. Then I have segment EF would be congruent to segment JK. And finally, segment FC would be congruent to segment KH. And our congruency statement would be something like um, CDEF would be congruent 
to H-I-J-K. Another congruency statement would be where you would start anywhere going around, and you can go in any order. You can go C-F-E-D would be congruent to H-K-J-I. And these are considered congruency statements. Let's look at letter B. For letter B, I see that um, R and X have one arc mark, and we have two tick marks and one tick mark, but I don't have any other information. So because I don't have any other information letting me know like what statement or how they want everything to correspond, unfortunately, I cannot say that without a doubt that they are congruent. I'd have to actually do a proof. And so therefore, I have to say not enough information. to say they are congruent. I would need more. So I'm gonna say not enough information to say that they are congruent. All right, next, let's go ahead and look at letter C. Letter C, I can see that N has one arc mark, L has one arc mark, this L has two arc marks, this L N has two arc marks, three arc marks, three arc marks. So, so far I have all of the angles. Now let's look at the sides. One tick mark, one tick mark, two tick marks, two tick marks. And here is where it gets kind of cool. I have a side that they share. And because they share a side, we get to use a property that we haven't talked about in a while called the reflexive property of congruence. And the reflexive property of congruence allows us to say that a segment like NL is congruent to itself. So we actually have two triangles here and I'm going to separate them to help us because sometimes it's, it's helpful to separate the triangles because I actually have two triangles here. Here's my first triangle and here is my second triangle. and they share one side. So yes, I am allowed to say that these triangles are congruent to each other. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna redraw the triangles and I think that that's gonna help us with our statements. So this is N, K, L, and I'm gonna mark up the arc marks and I'm gonna mark up the tick marks as well. And here is the other triangle. And this is N, M, L. This has one arc mark, two arc marks, and three arc marks. One tick mark, two tick marks, and finally three tick marks. And remember that they share the side. So that side is the side that they share. All right, let's go ahead and write down our angles. Now, because the triangles are connected to each other, you're not allowed to just use angle N or angle L. Instead, you have to use three letters so that we can identify what side of angle N and what side of angle L you're talking about. So I'm going to start off with this angle N with one arc mark is K-N-L. And this K-N-L is congruent to this side over here that has one arc mark. And that is, well, K matches with M because they have three arc marks, so I have to start with M. N would match with L and N. So this is one where the N and the L's actually don't match up with each other. So you have to be really, really careful. So that's our first arc mark. Our second arc mark is where we have K, L, N. That, ha that is our angle with two arc marks, K, L, N, 
would be congruent to angle, and if it helps you looking at the separated triangles, K would match with M once again, L would match with N because they have two arc marks, and then finally L. And our last angles would be angle K is congruent to angle M, and we're allowed to separate or write it with only one letter because there's no other angles that match up with it. So that's talking about our angles. Now let's go ahead and match up sides. So looking at one tick mark, I have side LM would be congruent to side, well, L has one arc mark, N has one arc mark, so that has to be N and K. Segment LK would be congruent to segment with B, L has two arc marks, three arc marks, two arc marks, three arc marks, N, M. Next, I'm going to say segment NL would be congruent to itself, but you can't say NL because that's not how they match up. You have to say LN. It's all about matching. So now let's go ahead and write a congruent statement. I can say triangle because we're talking about a triangle. We can say triangle NLK would be congruent to triangle, N matches with L, L matches with N, and then the letter M. So that is one congruency statement. Another congruency statement is we can say triangle, N, K, L, would be congruent to triangle, well, we're going in a different order, N matches with L, K matches with M, and L matches with N, L, M, N. And these are our two congruency statements. Finally, for letter D, let's go ahead and look at our triangles. So, so far I see an angle with a one arc mark, one arc mark, two arc marks, two arc marks. Where's the third one gonna come from? Well, right here. We have vertical angles, and we know that vertical angles are congruent to each other. So because we know that vertical angles are congruent to each other, we can mark those up. So reflexive property of congruence and vertical angles, I'm going to be looking for you to, guys to use those definitions to help us with identifying key information. So let's go ahead and identify our angles. Now remember, angle E, we cannot use just plain angle E. We'll have to label it with three letters because angle E represents many angles. But what's really nice is that angle D matches with angle H. And we know that angle G would be congruent to angle F. But angle E, well, this is going to be DEG, would be congruent to angle, well, D matches with H, and then E, and then F. So those are our angles, and now let's look at our side lengths. So DG has one arc, or one tick mark, and it would be congruent to HF, just based on our statements and matching. Segment HE, I'm sorry, uh, we'll go with uh, DE, excuse me, would be congruent to segment HE. And then finally, segment GE would be congruent to segment FE. And then writing our triangle congruent statements, we would say triangle DGE 
would be congruent to triangle HFE. And going in any other order, maybe we can go with triangle DEG would be congruent to triangle HEF. And that would be two congruent statements. All right, so that is identifying um, congruent statement or congruent triangles and matching up all of their parts. So let's go ahead and look at example number three. In example number three, they are telling you that these two shapes are congruent to each other. Always use the statement given to you. Don't use the picture. The picture will confuse you, as you guys have seen. It will confuse you. Always use the statement. So like F matches with S. Mark that on your picture. So if we know that F and S are, they match up in our statement, mark it up. G would match with T. So G matches with T. And they're asking us to find the measure of angle G. So using our statement, we can say 2X minus 7 is equal to 103 degrees because we used our statement to match. G matches with T. So now I'm going to add 7 to both sides and I find that 2X is equal to 110. Dividing both sides by 2, X equals 55. And all we needed to do was to find the measure of angle G, and we know the measure of angle G is 103 degrees. We found the value of X, and we found the measure of angle G. Let's go ahead and look at our next example. In our next example, we want to find the value of each variable. So this is going to be where we really need to focus on the statement. So looking at letter A, we are told that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. So fortunately for us, they've already marked up our arc marks, um, but it might be helpful for us to maybe put in more information. So it just depends on what you see. So I know that A matches with D, and if A is 65 degrees, D has to be 65 degrees. B matches with E, and then C matches with F. So I'm going to use the fact that I know that all of the angles of a triangle add up to 180, but what's really cool is I can see right here that we have a right triangle, so I'm actually going to use that corollary that says that the acute angles add up to 90, and I'm just going to go 90 minus 65, and that's going to equal 25 degrees. So therefore, y is equal to 25 degrees. Let's go ahead and look at letter B. For letter B, we are told that triangle KMO is congruent to triangle RTV. So that means that K matches with R, and we already have those arc marks in, and I'm going to write 45 degrees right here. M matches with T, and so I'm going to write M matches with T and put in those arc marks. And then I know that O matches with V. And now I just want to find the value of Y, and I know that all of the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So I'm going to write 45 plus 65 plus Y equals 180. 45 plus 65 is 110, plus y is equal to 180. I'm going to subtract 110 on both sides, and I find that y is equal to 70. So therefore, I know what y is. My variable is 70 degrees. Next, I'm going to look at letter C, and I'm going to once again focus on the statement, because if you look at this picture, it can get very, very confusing. So we are looking at triangle X, W, Y being congruent to triangle P, Q, Y. So I'm going to match up my picture. X matches with P. 
So X is 56 degrees. That means that P has to be 56 degrees. So I can already identify what X is. I'm gonna say 3X minus seven is equal to 56. I'm gonna add seven to both sides. And when I do that, I end up with 3X is equal to 63. Dividing both sides by three, we find that X is equal to 21. Cool, I found what X is. So now I'm going to look for Y. So just looking at what matches, I have W matches with Q. So I'm gonna mark that up, W matches with Q. But I don't know what W is, but I think I can find it because I know that using that corollary to the triangle sum theorem, I can find W pretty easily by going, the measure of angle W is equal to 90 minus 56. And 90 minus 56, that is gonna be equal to uh, 34. So if I know that angle W is 34, that means that this angle to Y also has to be 34 degrees. So I can set 2Y equal to 34, divide both sides by two, and we find that Y is equal to 17. And finally, letter D. In letter D, we are told that WRT, triangle WRT, is congruent to triangle WVT. And it looks like the arc marks are already put in for us, which is really, really nice. So let's go ahead and see what we can find. So in this problem, I can see that the three arc marks is 20 degrees. So I'm gonna mark up that the three arc marks is 20 degrees. I just don't know what the other arc marks are. So let me see what I can find. I can see that if this is 20 degrees and this is 120, I can find this other angle right here by going 180 minus 120 minus 20, and that's gonna equal 40 degrees. So this angle is 40 degrees. So I can write X minus Y is equal to 40. I can also see that 2X plus Y is equal to 120. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to set up a system of equations. So this is a Y right here. And this is called a system. And when you were in algebra, you learned how to solve systems of equations using a couple of skills. One skill was to use substitution and another skill is to use elimination. And elimination means that you line up your X's, you line up your Y's, and you line up your equal signs and you line up your constants. And what you're gonna do is you wanna analyze your variables and make sure that you have two variables with signs that are opposite and they would cancel out each other like the coefficients are the same yet different signs and I have that here so I'm going to add going straight down and I'm going to cancel out the y's and add my x's 1x plus 2x is equal to 3x and 40 plus 120 that is equal to 160. I'm going to divide both sides by 3 and when I do that, I end up with X is equal to 53.3. And we're going to leave it right there as 53.3. It ends up being 53.3 repeating, but we're just going to be approximating. So now since I know that X is equal to 53.3, I'm going to plug it back into my equation up here. And I'm going to say 53.3 minus Y is equal to 40. I'm going to subtract 53.3 on both sides. And I find that negative y is equal to negative 13.3. Dividing both sides by negative 1, we find that y is equal to 13.3. And that those are our variables, our, our answers for x and y. Most of the problems that you guys will have will not necessarily be systems, but I want you to be aware that we could take these types of problems to a whole new level. And that is the end of today's lesson. If you have any questions over anything that I showed you, please feel free to email me. Otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful day.